snow falls, the light fades, and the whole world is shrouded in a quiet gloom. As the last embers of the fire die out, there is a howling in the distance. You ready yourself, your nerves as hard as steel, knowing that whatever comes, you must face it alone. The Long Dark is a first-person survival game. In it, you play as a pilot in a near future where the world has undergone a massive ecological shift. At the start of the game, an old friend asks that you fly them to a remote island community, and after losing control of your plane during a freak magnetic storm, you find yourself stranded in the inhospitable wilderness of northern Canada. At which point, your goal becomes to strike out on foot across the frozen landscape looking for any signs of help or civilization. Gameplay-wise, The Long Dark focuses on exploration and survival. You will spend most of your time plodding through snow-covered forests, tundras, and mountains, only occasionally finding remnants of civilization, such as abandoned mining towns or empty farmhouses. And as you explore, you'll need to constantly take care of your body's needs, since, like most survival games, a big part of the challenge here is keeping yourself healthy. You'll need to manage your food and water, make sure that your character is eating and drinking regularly, as well as resting and sleeping to keep up your energy. And if you spend any time outside, you'll need to take care of your body temperature as well. Warm clothing can protect you from cold weather for a little bit, but eventually you'll either need to find shelter or start a fire to keep yourself warm or risk hypothermia. Most of the time, your goal will be that of exploration, either trying to find resources such as food and water, or trying to locate a navigatable path into the next area so you can continue your progress. However, you'll also need to utilize the game's crafting system, both for mundane matters such as cooking and eating your food, as well as more complex tasks such as building a snare to catch a rabbit, then skinning it, then curing the hide, then using that leather to make yourself winter clothing. In addition, you may also be challenged to fight or frighten local aggressive wildlife, as encounters with starving wolves or bears can be brief but deadly. As for the positives of The Long Dark, first and foremost, the ambience is excellent. And this is multiple things, from the way that the levels look to the way that they're designed and laid out, the way that the sun crests over the horizon in the morning. All of it does a great job of presenting you with the feeling that you are trapped in this starkly beautiful landscape. And sound design is also a big part of it. The way that your boots will crunch in the snow, the way that the wind will whistle past your shelter, the way a wolf howls in the distance. The game does a great job of setting its environment appropriately. Another positive, although this might be more of a neutral depending upon your perspective, is the way the game handles its survival aspects in that it is very serious about them. In most games that have survival elements, that aspect of the game is just another layer of character management that gets easier as you progress since you have access to better resources and techniques as you play. In the long dark, it's pretty much the exact opposite. Your character will never be healthier than after the first loading screen. And trying to manage your hunger and thirst and sleep with an ever-dwindling pool of resources is a constant challenge. There are even debilitating conditions like frostbite or food poisoning that exist only to punish the unprepared. Much like the wilderness in real life, this is a situation where you must adapt quickly or die. Now, unfortunately, while the positives of the game are fairly general, the negatives are far more specific. 
And while some people might not consider them that bad, for the time being I'm just going to give you my opinion at least. For starters, the game is somewhat tedious in that there are a lot of basic activities that need to be repeated frequently. Some of these activities are obvious and acceptable, constantly having to eat and drink water in order to keep yourself fed and well hydrated, that, that I can understand. However, some of your activities have randomized fail states. For example, every time you try to start a fire, there's a chance that you will fail to get it going, and this chance increases if you don't have matches or kindling. But your only interaction is clicking the start fire button and then sitting there waiting for the animation to play out, hoping for the best. However, the largest tedium contributor in the entire game is the activity of scavenging for supplies. Essentially, every time you come across an abandoned structure or dilapidated cabin, your first priority will be to scavenge through all the boxes and bins for useful food and medical supplies. What this means in terms of gameplay is that first you find a container that you want to examine, then you point your cursor at it, and then you click and hold until the search bar fills. At which point, you get your results. Sometimes you find useful supplies, most of the time you find nothing at all. At which point, you get to repeat this process for every other container you want to search. And in my personal opinion, repeating this activity on an entire kitchen's worth of cupboards and trash bins is a miserable experience. And I understand they, they probably did it like this to increase verisimilitude, to simulate your character actively digging through the bins in real time. But in the process, by just adding those extra few seconds where you have to click and hold on every single container, They've managed to take what, in every other game, is already an incredibly repetitive chore and here drag it out to the point of frustration. It, it got to the point where I actually started dreading finding new buildings because it meant that I was going to have to start opening containers again. But, as frustrating as the game's repetition is, what bothered me more is how even though one of the game's main focuses is on exploration, the actual activity of exploration is endlessly problematic. For starters, your character is not fast. Just getting around and actually exploring the environment is a slow process. And while you have a sprint button, using it drains your stamina, which means that you're going to need to stop for food, water, and rest more often. On top of that, you have to worry about encumbrance. The weight from your clothing and your foodstuffs and any weapons or materials you might be carrying will slow you down even further and also drain your stamina, which again requires you to stop and rest more often. Forcing you to play this cruel balancing act where you have to decide, okay, do I carry all the supplies I need to survive and continue playing the game, or do I dump some of them so that I can actually get where I want to go in a reasonable time frame? And even after you've made your choice, normal travel is extremely hazardous. Not only are there sub-zero temperatures and roaming packs of wolves, but even just moving around can injure you. You can injure yourself opening a can or walking too quickly down a sloped hillside or especially falling from any height, no matter how small it might look to you at the time, runs you the risk of spraining an ankle, or worse. And, as you can probably guess, a sprained ankle reduces your movement speed even further. And in the end, all of these elements combine to create a gameplay loop where you're just constantly trapped in these repetitive tasks points where you're constantly just waiting, waiting for the weather to clear, or for your food to cook, or for all these containers to be searched, just 
waiting ad nauseum for conditions to be right so that you can actually go out and explore and play the game and actually make progress instead of just maintaining your current progress. And yet, I do have to admit, hmm, that the game, as designed, has a certain uncompromising mystique to it. If you'll indulge me for a moment. I was playing the game during a survival session. As I was playing, I found a small farmhouse that I was using as a home base. I had been at the house for several in-game days, slowly stockpiling it with all the resources that I had gathered from the surrounding area. Food, water, extra clothing and crafting materials. The natural safety and warmth of a man-made structure also meant that I had plenty of time to perform mundane tasks like chopping firewood or repairing my equipment. The house was a safe, comforting, but also confining location, and each in-game day I grew more and more eager to set out into the wilderness. And so, one misty morning, at full health and stamina with a backpack full of supplies, I set out. My intentions were simple, find the passage to the next area, and then return to the house so that I could stock up with provisions for a longer expedition. I walked away from that farmhouse with the goal of finally satisfying my curiosity. But on that day, the morning fog never lifted. And without the ability to see into the distance, I was never able to update my map. The further I traveled, the further I went into unexplored territory. And then, sometime after noon, just as I was beginning to think about heading back, the winds began to pick up. A blizzard swept in without any warning, and my previously restricted visibility dropped to nothing. Snow and ice was all I could see, and as the temperature dropped, I knew I was in trouble. I had only brought enough supplies for one day's journey, and as the temperature dropped, I knew that soon I would suffer frostbite and eventually death. In the winds of the storm, I would be unable to build a fire, and so, in a panic, I rushed back to the farm. With my map useless, my only way of navigating was with a series of half-remembered landmarks. The minutes ticked by, until, by pure luck, I located the withered orchard at the edge of the farm's property. Desperately, I rushed ahead, only to find nothing. No house, no shelter. Because of the storm, I had no idea what direction I was actually traveling in, and whether I was heading towards the house or just deeper into the orchard, I couldn't say. And then, in the darkness ahead, I found a single telephone pole next to a snow-covered path. I knew that I was close. I remembered that this telephone line led from the main road back to the house. But as I stood there in the howling winds, I was paralyzed with indecision. I still didn't know which direction I was facing. I still didn't know which line of the telephone I needed to follow. And if I chose wrong, I might not have the opportunity to turn back. That situation, and the decision that I had to make in that moment, was and remains one of the most intense experiences I've ever had in a video game. And to a certain extent, it was only possible because the long dark is such a restrictive and monotonous experience. It wasn't that there was an enemy that defeated me. It wasn't that there was a puzzle I couldn't solve or a challenge that I couldn't overcome. I was simply trying to satisfy my own curiosity, and in doing so, I forgot how dangerous the game's world actually was. And this is part of what makes The Long Dark so tricky to review and recommend. It's, it's, it's hard to give the game an objective score. With a niche game like this, so much of it depends upon your personal preferences. I personally found myself playing it a lot, but not necessarily enjoying all of the time I spent. There was too much repetition, too many tedious tasks, and sometimes it felt like the game was just arbitrarily punishing me. And yet, I would probably still give it 3 out of 4 stars, and my recommendation 
if you are part of the very specific audience who wants a survival game where the survival element is paramount. Do not be confused by its presentation or its design. This is a game of hard choices, one where your success is never guaranteed nor convenient. You may explore, you may collect and craft, you might even defend yourself from wild animals, but your goal is always the same, just to survive one more day. And the game makes no guarantees that you'll be able to do that. Good enough then? Thanks for listening. And you remember to take care of yourself. It can be a cold, cruel world out there. Till next time.